Let's take some time to discuss rotating cross sections in a stack component. If we click on our stack, come to our cross sections, and we'll play with cross section two here. We've already got this set up with our basic stack model that we're using for an example. And I'm just gonna play with some of these rotation parameters and we'll be able to observe the behavior. Now with rotation in X, just like we do with the delta X, Y, or delta Z, think of this as a delta rotation about the X axis. So you can see that the preceding section and everything before it is staying the same. And all of this stuff after it is also staying the same. So even the skinning and the lofting between these sections is rotating in X along with this cross section. So we can give it some X. If we give it Y, you're going to be pitching it up and down. So again, notice how the other cross sections are rotating along with it. They don't really care. And then we can also give it some rotation in Z. So notice that the axis that you're rotating about is still aligned with the cross section here. So Z is going to be vertical, the pitch is going to be horizontal, and then X is going to be normal to the cross section. That convention still applies. As a refresher, the only thing that doesn't act in a delta built up fashion is spin. So you can see as we spin it backwards or spin it forwards, these feature lines are wrapping around the cross section, but they're remaining in the same spot on these others. And that's because spin is one of those features where you're trying to replace the feature line in a relative point on a single section, and you don't necessarily want your feature lines all wrapping around because it's kind of important that it hits everything on a per cross section basis. So that's how you give a delta rotation to a stack cross section. And we'll give a little bit of a demonstration on how you can use subsequent cross sections with a combination of translation and rotation to create a really interesting component.